Have you ever had to have a vaccination and spent days being anxious about the injection that is to come? What if I told you that in the near future, it is possible that vaccines could be eaten so you can avoid that nasty injection? In your intestines, lymphoid tissue containing immune cells secretes antibodies into the intestine. We eat a lot of bacteria every day, and these antibodies prevent them from invading our body. How does our immune system know which antibodies to produce then? Each time these immune cells meet a new type of bacteria, they will learn to recognize these bacteria by identifying unique protein molecules on their cell surface. These are called antigens. Once these antigens are shown to an immune cell, this immune cell will begin to produce antibodies against this antigen. So, the next time this bacteria comes along again, these immune cells will be activated and release antibodies against this bacteria. As long as our immune system is healthy, this bacterium will never invade our bodies ever again. What an edible vaccine hopes to do then is to allow our immune cells to recognize the bacteria without the risk of infection. We will eat the bacteria's antigen in the food, not the bacteria itself. The antigen itself cannot infect us as most antigens are just peptides, polysaturides or lipids, not living things. But it serves the same purpose, which is to show our immune cells what the bacteria looks like. Once they do so, they will know what antibodies to produce and will have an army of immune cells ready to attack the actual bacteria when it comes. Not having to fall sick again sounds perfect, isn't it? But then, how do we make these antigens? This is where biofarming comes into place. The term biofarming is somehow like farming, where we use animals or plants to produce food. In biofarming, cells are used to produce biological substances, for example, a protein or an antibody. The concept behind biofarming is a simple one. In living organisms, genes encode a specific sequence which eventually results in the production of a unique protein. So to get the protein we want, we just need to insert the gene that encodes for the protein we want into the organism. Let's say we need to produce insulin, a protein hormone that helps to control diabetes. From human DNA sequencing, we have already been able to identify the exact DNA sequence that codes for insulin. All we have to do is to insert this gene into a cell's DNA. There are several ways to do this, including transformation and transduction. Once successfully inserted, this cell will start to produce insulin under the right conditions. But why do we need biofarming? Couldn't we just continue producing medicines chemically? Turns out, biofarming helps to solve a very important problem, and that is chirality. Most proteins, drugs, and enzymes are actually chiral compounds, meaning they exist in two forms that are mirror images of each other, called enantiomers. Although enantiomers are made up of exactly the same components, their different arrangement can result in drastically different effects on the human body. For example, dopamine is a drug used to treat Parkinson's disease, and it exists as two enantiomers, D and L-dopa. D-dopa causes numerous side effects, including vertigo, headache, and vomiting, whereas L-dopa does not. Hence, only L-dopa is used in medicine. Biofarming avoids the problem of chirality because, as mentioned, even enzymes are chiral compounds they only act on and produce a specific enantiomer. Hence, with biofarming, we are able to control the production of a particular enantiomer by selecting the correct enzyme. Whereas in chemical synthesis, it is more difficult to control which enantiomer is produced. In an undisturbed chemical reaction, a racemic mixture is produced, meaning there are equal amounts of each enantiomer. A chirochemical catalyst may be used to change the proportion of each enantiomer produced but this is usually very costly. So far, biofarming has contributed to medical advancements tremendously. A good example is the production of insulin, as mentioned previously. Insulin is a crucial part in treating diabetes and is used to be taken from the pancreas of pigs and cows. This caused many patients to have allergic reactions as the solutions contain foreign material. Currently, 
With biofarming, we are able to produce insulin derived from human DNA. This not only avoids allergic reactions, but also reduces costs, as biofarming can be conducted on a larger scale than ever before. And like mentioned before, thanks to biofarming, there is hope for edible vaccines. In future, we may simply eat a corn or potato and become immune to malaria, measles, or hepatitis B. That is much more convenient than injections and might also improve access to vaccination in developing countries. And, like many other biotechnologies, the boundaries for real-life application of biofarming have not yet been explored thoroughly. There is a growing possibility that using biofarming, new medications that can help to slow down currently incurable diseases such as type 1 diabetes may be developed. Another forefront of biotechnology that holds immense potential would be pluripotent cells, which will be explained in the next video.